Yeah, welcome. My name is Paul Kroon, and today I'm going to be your host. And what I'm what to talk to you about today is working with relationship when you're using an SQL database, which a lot of us do. Um, and you build an app from Power Apps, you get just a number, but no user knows the numbers. So we want to change that to a combo box so we can have a visible pick from a customer list or an order list. So let's go to Power Apps. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a app from data. And I'm gonna use my Power Apps demo database I built in Azure. And I'm gonna build from the sales order header a app and what power apps is going to do is going to build an app with three screens one screen with a category where i can pick an order one screen with uh, details uh, in a few and one to edit my record so here's my app so let's go to the first and we see here the details and when we go further we see uh, the customer or, uh, or edits field. And what we want to change is the customer field here, which is a number uh, to a combo box where we can pick a customer. Or in this case, I'm gonna show you to pick a contact person uh, from a customer. So what we first gonna do is we're gonna go to another screen to our SQL database. And here I have my uh, tables and I don't want to connect directly to the customer table. No, I want to make a few. So I'm gonna uh, just do a select all for my table. And normally it's select the top thousand. So you have to uh, erase this part, what says select top uh, thousand. And then you're okay. And I'm gonna add two columns and the first column I'm going to use the formula concat way s and the first column is the full name of the customer and the second column I want to add is refer so first the last name and then the first name so uh, the concat underscore way s function wants to have a separator at the first so I'm going to do a space here and then he wants to have the columns you want to show I'm going to call this first name as an alias and I'm going to do another function now with a comma and a space and then start with the last name and after that the first name and as full name we first. So oh, let's run this query and go to the end and we see now a column with a first name and with a last name. And what the concat way s function does is that it's going to skip all the columns uh, which are empty. So when you only have the last name, it's just going to state the last name without spaces. So that's a nice function to remember. We kind of copy this. And then I'm going to say I want to add a new view. Just close this box and copy our formula or our query in our box. And with Control R, we can run this. And we see uh, this is the table we want to select. And we see our full name and full name we first. And we kind of save this. And I'm using a prefix uh, VW for fuel and then just customer. Okay, refresh my views and run it once again. Select all customers to see if it's performing in the right manner. So then we go back to Power Apps again. And let's start with our edit screen. 
So what we are going to do is add in a custom combo box here and uh, connect the combo box to our new mesh view uh, with a default which is the same as this number and after that we can uh, connect our data card to our combo box instead of our text field so what we first have to do is select the whole data card go to advanced and say we want to unlock this data card when you don't unlock the data card the combo box will be on the screen instead of in the data card so you don't be connected to uh, the data card itself and the form itself so when we now add a combo box and let's make this a little bit bigger for now so we can see what we do and drag the combo box here so first we have to say to the combo box we don't want to allow multiple selections because we have a, a relationship this text field or this field in our uh, database will only have one integer so we don't want to pass more than one uh, items to our database so that's why we say allow multiple selections of and after that we come to, come to connect it to our data source so at the data source and find our few customers so that's connected we don't want to have the company name but we have, want to have the full name and for the search fields let's do it with the, in the advanced type let's copy the full name and paste it before the company name okay what we now have to do is to say um, let's sort the customers and let's sort it by full name and we want to sort it ascending so when we now run our app we have a list of our companies and we want to have a list of our full names and that's sometimes uh, strange with uh, a combo box a little bit annoying that it doesn't keep these parameters when you change the items so sometimes it's being reset so i think it's good to look at how you uh, set your parameters before changing uh, the items okay we have more than one customer but i think for now it's okay because it's an example so now we have connected our combo box to our data source and uh, we now want to have the customer which is selected by the parent default so to do that we go to the default selected items where is it selected items and here we're going to do a lookup we're going to do, do a lookup on our view and there the customer id has to be the same as the parent default or may and uh, you can do this but you can also do uh, this item dot customer id and i think this way with the this item dot customer id your app will run smoother it's a little bit faster than a parent default uh, i don't know why but probably the parent default is set later than uh, the actual record where it's based on so i always use this item customer id so now you see we have uh, rosemary carol in our box and when we go back and use another order we have Katerina Abel. So that's fine. So this works. 
Now, when we want to change the order and we want to, uh, for example, use Abigail, we want this customer ID to change. And what we have to do for that is to connect the data card, update parameter and connect it to this combo box. And when you look at the combo box um, and you connect it to a data source, I think people who are programming more should understand it, but basically you have a list of objects or, or records. So each uh, selection, the Abigail selection, is not only Abigail. When we put in a label, just to show, we say we want to connect this to the combo box. One dot selected item. We can use all the parameters in our uh, data source. So this combo box, each record contains all the information which you bring in with connecting it to the view. So go back to the data card and what I said we're gonna do with the update and here we have a formula we have the value of our data card 10 text and the data card 10 text you see it in green is this data card so when we kind of change this to a free for example and we say save it's going to change to free and then we have a laura so the data card in this case wants to have a value with a number so let's say we want to connect this to our combo box and then we're going to choose the selected oh. selected item and it want, wants to have a number and the number we want to give back is the customer id So now it's connected to the combo box and when we change to Aiden Delaney and we say save, there is another customer ID connected to this object. Okay, now we can remove this box and drag this above and direct this a little bit smaller and we did our changes now he's yelling at me and he's yelling for the error message so we have to connect the error message to our combo box one double click copy double click paste and now our red yelling thing is gone so now we have the customer ID and we can rename this if you want to a customer name. So now this works. Let's change it one more time. And we see that this change. Now I think here we want to change it also. And on this moment, the text is to the parent default. And before we can change it, we go to the advanced screen again and unlock this screen. And what we then going to do is do a lookup again on our view, say the customer ID should be the same. And we're going to use the this item again because it's a little bit faster customer id and in this case we don't want to um, look up a record we want to look up a text field so let's look up the full full name oh the full name 
and return that to our box. Change it to the customer customer name. And we're done. So when we change this to Abraham and we submit our form, it's going to be changed to Abraham. And when we want to add a new item, the customer name, it's empty again. Now you saw a little, uh, you saw that it changed from the name we selected earlier to zero. So we see that it's a little bit, uh, it has to update. And of course we can change that by saying, okay, we want to reset the form to a default blank when we leave the screen. So that's the way how to do that. So in this way, you can uh, change the text box with a number to a combo box with everything you want to show the customer to pick from. And you know how to put it back to uh, the data source with submitting the form. So I hope you like this video. And if you do, please like and subscribe. And I hope to see you in other videos. Thank you for watching.